For the hip, the uh, initial things we're going to look at is selective tissue tension testing. We're going to take the hip through flexion actively. Go ahead as far as you can, up to 120 or more degrees. With after active, I'm going to place my hand underneath, put an overpressure through the hip, and then have her resist against me into hip extension. I'm going to bring her down. Since we can't do full extension here, we'll do that in a minute in, in, in prone. So we'll look at coming to abduction and adduction. I'm going to have you take your left leg and bring it all the way out into abduction as well as you can without uh, moving your pelvis too much. So I'm going to watch your pelvis and try to make it pure. And I want you to hold against that, again, that resistance. I'm going to hold you there and relax, okay? So there was overpressure and then contraction. Lift the leg up, have her actively bring her leg through a deduction. Watch that again, it's pure motion of the hip and not going so far that you move through the pelvis or trunk. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to put pressure on the outside of the foot, and you're going to get over pressure first, stressing it, then I'm going to have you push against me to contract against there, to see if it produces any pain. With hip rotation, we'll bring her first into 90-90 position, and I'm going to have her go into uh, external rotation of the hip as far as she can bring her foot inward. Good. Once I'm there, then I'm going to overpressure that direction, and I'm going to have her push out, looking at her internal rotators. So her pressure is through my hand on her foot. Then I'm going to actively have you go into your foot out or internal rotation of your hip. I'm going to stress an overpressure on the inside, and then I'm going to have you pull with your, against my hand here while I stabilize at the knee, and we're looking at the external rotators, stressing at that point. This can also be looked at in prone, as we said, so we're going to look over on the other side. In this position, we'll have the hip in neutral. We'll bring the knee to 90 degree bend, stabilize it. I'm going to put my hand and stabilize through her pelvis to allow the rotation to occur through the knee and not to get too much rotation through the spine. So I'm going to have her go actively, bring her leg across her other leg, which is going to bring her into external rotation. I'm going to overpressure and then I'm going to have her push out against me once she returns to her natural active position, and that's going to look at the internal rotators. Then I'm going to bring her into internal rotation. I'm going to overpressure, release her back to her active position, and then I'm going to have her meet my resistance, which is looking at her external rotators. This position, we can also look extension uh, that we didn't get to look at on the other side. I'm going to have her with her leg in straight position. I'm going to have her actively lift her hip into extension. I'm stabilizing at the pelvis to get as pure motion at the hip as possible. I'm going to place my hand underneath her thigh. I'm going to give her overpressure with a counter force with my other cranial hand. And then I'm going to have her resist against me. I'm also going to do this in a bent knee position where she actively pushes her foot to the ceiling. Then I'm going to overpressure with again the counter force at the pelvis, allowing the hip motion to occur and then she's going to resist me against my hand. Some of the other important uh, tests that we can do to look at the hip is, is one of them is the scour test or a combined motion test where we're going to look at the ability for the hip to move around through the different quadrants. And in this position, it's traditionally uh, found that some people will tend to overpressure a little too much. And remember that the shape of the acetabulum does have some tubercles, so you want to make sure that you're not producing a pinching or discomfort that might give you a false positive. We're feeling for the shape of the joint at first initially through the superior quadrant in the, in the middle lateral area. Make sure you're not adding too much internal rotation because that's going to then uh, change the testing to looking at some labral conditions. So we're looking at just right now the shape, the smoothness. We should see a full circle across the top of the joint. It should be smooth, not crepitous or feeling like a washboard kind of feeling. If the person's comfortable, we may put a little bit more increased pressure as we scour around. We can bring that scour to a lateral position. The scour can also be done through a more extended position, which is a little harder to feel here, but you can go through those different quadrants in extension. Another position we like to look at is Patrick's test or a Faber's position, where we're going to come into a figure of four. Traditionally, this test was looking at purely position of the leg, and we would look to see if the person on letting the foot leg go out into an external rotated position, whether the leg comes to fairly horizontal with the table, and whether, again, what kind of symmetry they have. 
This may vary according to, some, according to age, where somebody that's a little bit older may not have perfect horizontal, but look very symmetrical, have some spring on overpressure. We do also look at this as a possible test for reproduction of pain. This test can, if does produce pain, can be uh, looked at differentially by bringing the hand under the back while we're in a, a relaxed position, stabilizing the SI joint, allowing the leg to come out again. If at this point the pain that was produced with the first portion of the test with no stability goes away, then we have to consider differentially that the SI joint might be involved. The second way of looking at that is if there's pain is also to take the pressure off, put pre pre a, a shear through the SI joint and then reproduce and then again that brings on pain or increased pain there may be an SI joint. That's a differential component for the test. Further we can look at combined tests with extension. So we can take as we did with the stress, uh, the selective tissue test, test, we can do extension, make sure we're holding and supporting the pelvis to allow more motion to purely come from the hip. With this, we, with our supported arm underneath and holding the thigh, we can look at a combination of motions of extension, abduction with internal rotation, both for, again, provocation of their symptoms and any kind of uh, sense of end feel. We can also do this with extension, internal rotation, and adduction as a combined motion. Again, looking for provocation and potentially for a general end feel kind of the condition. These tests in general are stress tests for the different ligamentous system of the hip. Additionally, we might make comment that on these positions we could look at these as possible uh, general stress tests for the hip. If we're coming into this position of extension, abduction and internal rotation, we're looking at the iliofemoral uh, proponent that could be a more medial branch. If we bring it into the adductive position, we're looking at the lateral component of that. If she goes on her back, when we did the Faber's test, we're looking at the, potentially the pubofemoral ligament as being stressed. When we went in the scour, and particularly if we add any form of compression through the posterior region, we're looking at the ischiofemoral and capsule, posterior capsule of the hip.